in your mind is the greatest miracle of all that God wow. has performed for I us. I think the greatest miracle is that he let us be a part of it. I guess the thing that we could look back and say that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, we would not have made it. We would not have made it. That's why Satan hates Christian television, because we're snatching people yeah. right out of Satan's hands. Let's oh. praise the Lord. But I just lifted my face up to God and I said, God, if you'll help me, I'll bring ten thousand off down here for the children in Haiti. How are you, cowboy Caleb? <laughs> Seven years old, accepting Jesus as his Savior. And that's what TBN is all about. Jan Crouch was born on March 14, 1938, in New Brockton, Alabama. The daughter of Reverend and Mrs. Edgar Bethany, Jan grew up in Columbus, Georgia, where she experienced the benefits of a rich spiritual heritage through her father's ministry as an Assembly of God pastor. Hi, Rich Wilkerson here in Miami, Florida, and I want to thank Matt and Lori for this opportunity to honor their dear mother, Jan Crouch. The last time I was with her personally, I was hosting Praise the Lord, out of Miami that night. We had a number of guests, and Jan wanted to be a guest, and I was the host. What an honor. And that night, she wanted to talk about her father and how her father, Dr. Edgar Bethany, a Jewish man, had been led to the Lord by my grandfather, D.P. Holloway, in about 1922 or 23. It's a miracle story, but that's how far back our families go. You never know the impact your life is going to have on someone else. Never keep the gospel back. Keep it going. That was Jan's powerful ministry. It was at a camp meeting in South Dakota where Jan met a young man named Paul Crouch. After a time of courtship, they got married and spent the next several years serving in pastoral ministry in the Midwest, while Paul worked in management in both radio and the emerging field of broadcast television. In 1965, the Crouches moved to California, where in 1973, they took a significant step of faith by blazing a trail for a new medium called Christian Television by launching the Trinity Broadcasting Network. As Paul and Jan said, yes to God's call, they found themselves on a path leading to a unique destiny God had chosen just for them. My dear, do you realize that you and I are both 40 years older than we were in 1973. But a lot wiser. Yes. A lot stronger. Yes. Learned a lot about the Lord. So many things are different than when we first began. It would be a path that would start with one tiny station and multiply into a powerful network transmitting the gospel to every corner of the globe. For Paul and Jan Crouch, the call would come on the way home following a ministry event in Hollywood, California. As I said a moment ago, this place is almost like holy ground to me because it was in 1972 that we were in this very auditorium. I was working for a wonderful church called Faith Center. Pastor Raymond Schock was his name, precious man of God. And... Uh, Jan and I were excited. We had had a big rally here. Doug Oldham had been our special singing mm -hmm. guest. Pastor Shock preached. I had shared a little bit. Jan and I thought we were absolutely in the center of his will, that this was his plan for our life. We were going to help build this new TV and radio station just in Southern California. And we were higher than a kite. And as we drove out of Hollywood High School parking lot right here, the Lord said, Son, I release you from your ministry at this church. And it shocked me. And I looked over at Jan sitting beside me. I said, Honey, you'll never believe what the voice of the Lord has just spoken. 
She smiled at me, and already a little tear had started. And I just began to cry. I looked at him, and I said, yes, I would, because the Lord just spoke the same thing into my heart. It wasn't long until they understood what God wanted them to do, build a Christian television station in Southern California by faith. We found out about a little low-powered TV station that had gone on the air for a few months in Los Angeles, California, and had promptly gone bankrupt and off the air. It was dark and off the air, and we learned that the gentleman who owned it, if he didn't get it back on the air by a certain date, it would have to go back to the Federal Communications Commission. The license would be canceled and it would have to be turned back to the commission and the station would be gone. Within two months, God miraculously provided a little building on Dyer Road that would become the first home of the Trinity Broadcasting Network. Faith is walking to the edge of all the light you have and taking one more step. For Paul and Jan Crouch, following God's call required that kind of faith. Hi, this is Pat Robertson. All of us here at CBN was saddened when we learned the news that a dear friend had gone to be with the Lord, Jan Crouch. She was a fixture on the Trinity Broadcasting Network. People saw her ebullient spirit, her faith in the Lord, and uh, realized what an important role she played in Trinity in supporting her dear husband, Paul Crouch, who was a close friend. My mom and daddy dedicated their life to the thought that Jesus is really building us a place in heaven. And my sweet little mama, my mama Jan Crouch, just this week uh, went to meet Jesus. Lori and I were standing there with her when she did. Flipping and through the historic photos, I was getting frustrated. The deadline for finishing the 40th anniversary book was looming and I still hadn't found a picture of my mom and dad that I thought was special enough to go in the very front. There was a whole box of photos there that had been taken over the early years of the beginning stages of TVN. They were all basically the same, Paul and Jan on their knees in prayer. Not one single photo that really stood out, you know, something exciting like standing in front of a satellite dish or setting up a transmitter in some foreign land. They were pretty much all the same. And then, of course, it struck me. The photos were all the same because that was their legacy. On their knees before the Lord, seeking everything through prayer. God, I thank you that we will pick up the banner of Paul and all of the disciples that went forth. We will do our part. We will carry this banner. We will use this television time you've given us. We will tell the world that Jesus loves them, that Jesus died for them, and that Jesus is coming soon. And we thank you, God, for the opportunity of snatching those people that Jesus died for and loves but are going to hell because nobody has ever told them are giving them the choice. Jan Crouch was one of the most powerful prayer warriors I've ever known. I mean, they prayed things through. She was tenacious, focused. She would not be defeated, not discouraged. Anything that came of it against that vision that she and Paul had, they took it to the Lord in prayer. Well, today, today, as I speak, She's in heaven along with her husband, Paul, and the vision that they had has come true. Beginning with one small, low-power station in Orange County, California, over the next 40 years, Paul and Jan, with the help of countless partners and friends, watched TBN grow into America's most watched faith network and the world's largest religious broadcaster. Think about the fact that I'm able to stand in one place and preach the gospel and minister to people around the world because of the vision of Paul and Jan Crouch. What a miracle. What a blessing. What an honor it has been to do that all of these years. And so many of you 
know our beloved sister, mama, lady, Jan is now with Jesus. And we are rejoicing in the celebration of her life. And I said we're rejoicing in the celebration of her life. Come on, let's thank God for the life of Jan Crouch. You know, as I, as I was preparing to come here today and to minister and just asking the Lord what I would do, I, I, would, I was thinking, you know, I, I have not in my mature adult life known a Paul and Janless Christianity. As long as I can remember, Paul and Jan Crouch were in front of this television camera telling people to praise the Lord, telling people to trust in Jesus, telling people that Jesus saves. Now they're together again in the presence of the living Jesus. And I tell people all the time, you know, when we transition from this life to the next we don't speak in terms of loss. I don't want us to talk about having lost Lady Jan. When you know where someone is, they're not lost. The Bible says to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. And so tonight we rejoice that Lady Jan is present, alive with the Lord Jesus. And I want everybody around the world to take one moment and shout hallelujah. She has gone. She has gone from labor to reward. Marguerite, I wonder what my life would have looked like had it not been for Jan Crouch. Mine too. There's even a church here in Southern California that's done a pretty good job impacting yeah. the nation and the world that would not be the kind of church it is without Jan Crouch. Absolutely. In fact, you know what? I'm so old, I remember, Marguerite, when TBN first started. I don't think it was even called TBN. It was yeah. just called Channel 40 <laughs> right here in Southern California. And I can't tell you how many people, including our own son-in-law, Charlie, Absolutely. who uh, watched TBN day after day, changed his life, changed his family life. I wonder what your life would have looked like had it not been for Jan Crouch. Hi, I'm Walt Mills, and when my wife and I received the word about Jan's home going, it brought back so many, many memories. The first time Jan ever heard me sing was in 1977. She continued to invite us to be a part of TBN all through the years, and those are wonderful memories to me. There came the time when they wanted to produce a program on us, and because of Jan, she allowed me to preach this gospel, my wife and I, to preach this gospel around the world for over 20 years, and I'll never forget that. And when our son died, Jan Crouch was the first one to make the call, and I won't forget that. Our memories are full, some sad, some very happy, but our memories are full. Today we honor the memory of Jan Crouch, and for me, remembering goes way back to the small town I grew up in. I remember for the first time being able to turn on the television and see some of the heroes of my faith. I mean, the small town, I didn't get to hear these men and women of God who had such an impact on my life and really upon our country and our world. But I'd turn on TBN and I'd get to hear them interviewed and get to know them a little bit better. And all of that happened because of the life that Jan Crouch lived. The challenge of beginning that television station. I'm sure you've heard Paul Crouch as he talks about all that they faced and you and I both know that those challenges never end. We celebrate their steadfastness and we honor their commitment to never give up, to never stop, to never pull over to the side, but to continue to follow God with an incredible, incredible passion. She had a tremendous vision together with her husband Paul that they had to take the good news gospel of Jesus Christ to all the nations of the world. They also had a tremendous faith to believe that God would open doors, would provide television channels, and would provide the money to buy those channels. Today, TBN has the greatest network of television stations of any network, secular or Christian. That is an amazing tribute to the glory of God of the life of Jan and Paul Crouch. 
Over the years, God used Christian television to bring in a global harvest. As night after night, Jan would minister to viewers in her own special way. I was just reading Psalm 34, and I know it's in the Living Bible, and I know that a lot of people are going to bless, be blessed by this tonight because I know there are a lot of people that are hurting. And it's, I will praise the Lord no matter what happens. I will constantly speak of his glories and grace. I will boast of all his kindness to me. Let all who are discouraged take heart. Let us praise the Lord together and exalt his name. In Psalms 127.1, David writes, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who built it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. When I think of the roles my parents played and the legacy they left, I think this verse encapsulates them perfectly. My dad was the builder, my mom was the watchman on the wall, neither of them doing anything without the guidance of the Lord. Jan uh, was the, the bright light. Paul was the anchor. I suppose there's a way in which each of them to one another were the reverse because there was a partnership there that was so deep that here is another case as we often hear of a couple where one goes on to glory and not too long afterwards the second one does so as it was with Paul and Jan now and I've often thought of how that links something of a such a close link of their life together it's not as though they mourn to the point that they lost interest in life, but there's something of a connect that runs so deep that we can't explain it on the earth side of things, but it exists, it's real. What do I think of Jan Crouch? I think that Jan with Paul are inseparable and cannot be commented on in their own right. There was a beauty to each one, the beauty and the depth that oftentimes is imperceived because of the simplicity of their style. But you don't come up with a network the size of TBN and its global impact because you have people that are just pleasant to see or to hear talk or that are fairly simple. There's a complexity in it all that says far more than any of us can measure. And when I look at the tributes to their life that will come, they will be in the multiplied millions of people that will continue to be touched for Jesus Christ and the word of the truth of God. It was a joy to be honored as your friend. And beyond that, you humbled me, referring to me over and over as your pastor. In those occasions, I was welcome to serve in that way. I'm grateful. And I'm grateful for so much that you've given to all of us in your giving yourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. Mom was always the one hearing the voice of the Lord for protection. Whether it was being woken in the middle of the night to intercede for Arthur Blessed when he was being assaulted by Nicaraguan rebels half a world away, or basically just, you know, a dangerous business transaction, Jan Crouch stood high on the wall watching over TVN. God was able to use her because she never stood there alone. She knew it was the Lord himself who guarded the city. She just made herself available to hear his voice. Jan Crouch impacted the life of Steve and Pat Brock as no one has ever impacted us. She literally changed our whole perspective on ministry. She literally showed us a better way through the power of the Holy Spirit and the mighty hand of God that was upon her. Jan Crouch was a dreamer, a visionary, an entrepreneur, but to me, her best and most enduring quality was the way she inspired people and took the time to bring people along on the journey. She's helped so many people along the way, and today I'm humbled to be able to minister beside the Crouch family, and today I salute Jan Crouch. Her life, her work, 
Her legacy is unparalleled. Her influence will be felt for generations to come. Joel and I want to honor the life of Jan Crouch. She was such a woman of faith, such a pioneer for the kingdom of God. We love her so much, always encouraging, always blessing. Everyone who knew her would say the same thing. We celebrate you, Jan Crouch. We were blessed to be with Jan just a few weeks ago at one of our nights of hope. And as usual, Jan was full of joy, radiating life and peace and friendly, just fun to be around. Not only that, she had a passion for Jesus like few people alive. So we just celebrate all that Jan has done. Her memory will live on, and we bless the family as well. We just wanted to give a moment and, and let you, those that just happened to plan their time to be here at HLE to help us celebrate, would you give my sweet mama a round of applause? My mama, Jan Crouch, who dedicated her life to making sure people got to hear the name and the message of Jesus around the world. We, we celebrate that. I can't tell you the time she supernaturally knew what was happening in my own life and interceded for me just in time. One time my car caught on fire on the freeway. The Lord stirred her to pray another time, a car accident that my wife Lori and I were in. She was standing out on the porch. No one ever alerted her and she was waiting for us. She knew something had happened. She had an amazing way of not only hearing the Lord speak, but also a boldness in acting upon it. Hi, I'm Dave Reber. In 1969, I was injured in Vietnam and it left me scarred, maimed, mutilated. I've been burned from my waist to the top of my head. Left a lot of scar tissue, but most of those scar tissues that are hardest to heal are not on the outside, they're on the inside. I was embarrassed at my appearance. I felt horribly ugly. And suicide sat squarely in the middle of every day of my thought life. Until one day I was on Trinity Broadcast Network with a woman named Jan Crouch who looked at me and she said, do you know why God let you be scarred, maimed, and burned? I thought, no, but this woman's gonna tell me the answer to that question. I was polite when I didn't feel like being polite, and I said, no, Miss Jan, I don't guess I know why. She looked at me and said, Davy, Jesus didn't do that to you. He didn't shoot you, and he didn't set you on fire that day. But he didn't stop it from happening because he knew he could trust you with the scars. What for 20 years I had struggled with in thoughts of suicide to the point that I even planned it went away that day. The scar tissue of the outside can never compare to the lack of scars on the inside now. They don't make healings of outside scars like she made the healing of my inside scars. Jan Crouch will always be my favorite champion, my battle buddy. She went to war with me and fought for me. Today, she and Paul are gloriously reunited as she's gone on to be with the Lord, faithful in the field of battle. She fought with a John 3.16. I fought with an M16. She gave me a reason to live and not take my life. I will forever and eternally be grateful to Jan Crouch. Jan, I love you. When I had the grenade beside my head, a sniper opened fire. One of the bullets went through my hand into the grenade and it exploded. And as you mentioned earlier, it blew the side of my face off from my waist up. 40% of my skin was gone. I went blind in my right eye, deaf in my right eye. It's all plastic. I don't know if you remember that from before, but it's all artificial on this side. It come, I won't, but it does come off. <laughs> well, anyway. So my, mine. Is it, oh, <laughs> are you a Vietnam injury? No, but mine comes off too. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Well, if I can borrow yours and, and some false teeth, we can make another man in our own likeness right here. <laughs> What a woman of love. Oh, man, uh, those tears, they were real tears because she absolutely loved people. Although my favorite story is when she saw this cute girl named Lori, and she went up to her and found out that she was single because she was looking out for Matt. That was way back when. I love that story. Of course, the greatest example of her legacy, protection in my life, 
was her seemingly random encounter with a girl named Lori on an elevator 33 years ago. This would not just lead me to a meeting, but to the woman who would become my wife. But it would literally change everything about my life, setting it on a course I now find myself on today. In God's great ever unfolding story, it's only fitting that I first met Jan Crouch in an elevator, as my life has only gone up from there. Were it not for that providential encounter 33 years ago, I wouldn't have my husband, my children, or the joy of having shared a truly unique and special relationship with one of God's beautiful servants. Of course, none of it may have been realized without Jan's dedication to hearing the voice of God, and more importantly, her willingness to act on it. For those unfamiliar with the story, my parents and I were at the 1983 Kenneth Hagen camp meeting in Tulsa, Oklahoma, when I saw her and I got on the same elevator that she was on. And all of a sudden, this gorgeous little beauty got on the elevator. I didn't know why she was there. I hadn't met her before. And I heard coming out of my mouth to this little doll, you've got to meet my son. <laughs> I said that to her. She's so tiny, so cute. I said, you've got to meet my son. And she says, oh, I'm here with Hagen Camp Meeting. I said, oh, this is incredible. Anyway, they met that night. The fact is, I didn't even need to be on the elevator, but I felt that little push on my back as if it were the hand of the Lord himself urging me to get on that elevator. If I was initially surprised to see this monumental figure standing there beside me in the flesh, just imagine how much more surprised I was when Jan looked at me and the next thing I knew, she was dragging me off to meet her son, Matthew. Sure, there's a bit more to that story, but. As they say, the rest is history. I've always looked at this as a major divine encounter in my own life, yet I'm only now just grasping how much it meant to her. Ironically, the very last phone call I had with her before her stroke, Mama told me, I knew you were mine the second you got on that elevator. The world has gotten to know Mama Jan from the 43 years she spent living her life in the public spotlight on TBN. Though not everyone got Jan and her unique eccentricities, millions around the globe embraced her as part of their family, just as she embraced the TBN partners as members of her own. The partners are so special to us, and whenever we mention Trinity, it's you. It's you partners, because the Lord showed us from the first scripture, there were many with you. Paul Crouch, you didn't do it. No, no. Jan Crouch, there's no way you could do it. It's there were many with you. It was all of you. Her heart to reach the lost. Souls, 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 as she and Papa would say, was at the forefront of everything she did. TBN was her life because Jesus was her life. And yet I have had the great privilege of knowing that I was her life too. I count myself all the more blessed that because of that destined night, Jan went from being the inspiring leader and encourager in the faith that the world knew her as, to my mother in love. With that came the great joy of being exposed to all the other facets of her own beautiful soul that so many of the faithful partners or co-labors never got the opportunity to experience. The limitation of television is that it can only capture a portion of who a person truly is. Yet in an environment where big personalities and grandiose expressions of God's power can often seem the currency of the kingdom, and Jan certainly could hang with the best of them, she was always able to remain our precious mama and grandma, teaching me what was truly valuable in life and how to serve God while also sowing into my children and husband. The world never got to see the pure joy of Jan playing with her grandkids as they opened presents Christmas morning, but I did. Or to hear her wisdom and words of comfort to a frustrated young mother struggling to figure out what to do with a screaming newborn, but I did. Or had the opportunity to set off in pursuit of a dream fueled by the mountains of encouragement and support born from Jan's tenacious faith. In fact, through all of TBN's incredible expansion and growth and all the demands of her attention and time, Jan had the remarkable ability to make me feel 
like she was my biggest cheerleader, my biggest fan. Perhaps she was able to make everyone feel that way. Perhaps that's the way she and Papa were able to build the world's largest Christian television network from nothing, because they were able to make each and every one of us feel like they cared. The same hand that led us both into that elevator, into the first hello, was the same hand that led us both to sit side by side in that hospital room for our last goodbye. Words cannot even begin to express the honor and the privilege it was to spend her final moments by her side and then watch as she stepped onto the final elevator ride, leaving behind a powerful legacy of faithfulness and grace as she rode the short trip up into the arms of her Savior. And the goodness of God is all over her today. But she would want you to know today that Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. And there is a place for you waiting in heaven. So today I honor her. To a select few, she was not a television figure, but was a sister, wife, mother, and grandma, an integral part of a loving family. I was there the day she was born. And I was privileged to be here the day she left us. But that's not the important thing. The important thing they tell us is not the day you were born or the day that you pass, but it's the dash in between. And I just was thinking about her life and how she lived it. And the first word that came to me is found in the first book of Joshua, first chapter of Joshua, where it talks about courage. And I don't think I ever knew anyone who walked in such integrity to her calling and the courage to live the life that she was called. From the time that she was a child, she loved the Lord. She was such a bold adventurer. She had such faith in her Lord. And she walked every day knowing that this was her day to accomplish what her mission was, what what the Lord had appointed her to do. And it made all of us better people. It made all of us proud of her. And as her family, we can surely say that we're blessed to have been a part of her life. And we know where she is today. And we miss her terribly. And we'll miss her more. But we want the same Jesus that she served to be glorified in all of our lives in the same way. And the only way we can do that is also to learn to be bold in who we are, to believe in him who guides us, and to know that he is with us every day. Thank you all. He gave you the spirit of love Mm. and a sound mind and that's what comes from our Lord and I pray right now that in the name of Jesus that same Jesus that was raised from the dead and enters our mortal body with healing power that healed me of depression I speak in the name of Jesus be healed and whole and live again where there is death, life, where there's pain, healing, where there's sorrow, joy, where there is mind gone. We pray that that mind will be renewed and made whole in the name of the only one that can do it, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
the healer that has walked into your room right now and touched you. Wherever you are, that joy that you're beginning to feel in your spirit, yes, yes, that's yes. the joy of the Lord. That's the joy in the Holy Ghost. Is the healing that has come to you now in Jesus' name. In my moments of fear through every pain and every tear there's a God who's been faithful to me when my strength was
What an honor it is to take a moment today from here on our campus at Oral Roberts University to say thank you for the ministry and life of Jan Crouch. Jan was one of the most unique people in the entire kingdom of God. And I found with Jan over and over again through the years, her heart was pure gold. Here at ORU, we honored Jan with an honorary doctorate in 1990. And so from that time on, she's been one of our doctors here from ORU, and we claimed her as an honorary alum. Hello, this is Pastor A.R. Bernard from the Christian Cultural Center right here in Brooklyn, New York City. My wife, Karen, and I just want to offer our sincere condolences to the Crouch family. On behalf of Ava, our entire family, and of course yours truly, on behalf of our church community, and on behalf of the approximate 40,000 churches in America and close to half a million around the world, this beautiful Latino Christian evangelical network, we want to express our most sincere, heartfelt condolences to Matt and Lori and the entire Crouch family, and of course the entire TBN community around the world as it pertains to the passing of the matriarch, this godly Deborah and Esther Jan Crouch. Le damos la bendición. Hasta luego. You changed the world, Jan. Say hello to Paul. Hasta luego. Un abrazo. Many blessings. For the masses that are in this room, I've got one request. And I want you to honor this request if you really do love Jesus. Boy, that put the pressure on you. But if you really are born again, and if you really do love Jesus, and if you really are grateful for TBN, and the life of Jan Crouch. I want everything that hath breath in this room to give God the best praise that you have right now. I want you to weigh it out. Evaluate. Is that your best? Give God the best praise that you have. somebody that's going to really praise the Lord here. I, I need some folks that are going to really praise the Lord. Come on. Put those hands together. Come on. We love you, TBN family. We celebrate and honor the life of Jan Crouch. What an incredible legacy that she left behind. What an amazing impact. Millions of people. Yes have been reached because of Jan and Paul's obedience. Jan always made me say, These are the days of life, declaring the word of the Lord. You know these are the days 
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jesse the Planners. This is a day that I did not want to come to pass. When I heard of the report of Jan Crouch's passing, it really touched my heart. She had such a uniqueness about her that you would never forget, and a depth of love for Christ that is unsurpassed. These are the days of the season, the trials become I had the honor and the privilege of working alongside of Miss Jan Crouch for almost 10 years. And I'll tell you this, above and beyond everything else, her love for Jesus was paramount. It trumped everything else, every program format, every agenda. And it was because of her love for Jesus that she had the ability to love people the way that she did. I will forever remember her incredible example and testimony of faith. And I will forever be grateful to her for giving me the opportunity to do what I love doing best, preaching Jesus to the world. Oh, yeah, I've been singing this song every time I came here. And I want to know, is anybody waiting for the return of Jesus Christ? If you believe in this room that there is no God like Jehovah, I want you to raise your voice. There ain't no, there's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Hello, this is Pastor Matthew Barnett of the Los Angeles Dream Center. I am so honored and privileged to give a special tribute to Jan Crouch. One day here at the Dream Center, we get a phone call from TBN saying that Jan wanted to come down to the Dream Center and take a bunch of people that were living here out to Knott's Berry Farm and spend the day with them. I'll never forget how beautiful that moment was as she treated them all to chicken dinner, she spent day with them at the park, and just loved on the people in such a beautiful way. It's that heart, it's that joyfulness, it's that childlike spirit that she had that made Jan so special. As quiet to our ears as a fallen snowflake, Janice Bethany Krauss slipped away from this world to the world to come. And with the sensitivity of the morning dew, she has escaped from time into eternity, but not without leaving an indelible impression on the world. The first lady of Christian television she was, was faith, integrity, power, praise, worship, and uniqueness as only Jane could do. She touched all of us who watch Christian television.
I met and Laurie, it's Mark and Roma, and we so want to offer our condolences on the passing of your mom, Jan. And we just want to let you know that we're thinking of you and that we're praying for you and your family at this time and that we send you all of our love to you and to everyone in the TBN family. What's really important is not how you start in life, it's how you finish. It's the legacy that you leave and no one can question the legacy of Jan and Paul uh, and the ministry of TBN. I personally want to say thank you to the Crouch family and posthumously to Jan for giving me an opportunity to be a part of the TBN family and give me the privilege and honor of seeing God expand my ministry in a worldwide fashion that I never ever dreamed would ever come to pass. So I owe Jan a debt of gratitude that I can never ever repay. Hello, we're Creflo and Taffy Dollar and we're here to celebrate, appreciate the life and legacy of Jan Crouch for the wonderful work that God anointed her to do for the love that she had for the people, uh, for grace, Taffy, for the gospel of grace. This woman of God has been amazing in accomplishing all that God has put on her heart to accomplish. My sweet little mama had a passion for getting the gospel of grace across the United States and then, of course, around the world. God, help us reach China. Help us reach Indonesia. Help us reach South America. Help us reach those beautiful people in the Middle East. Help us reach South America. Help us reach those angels in Haiti. God help us. To Matthew, Lori, and the entire family of the Crouch family, and the TBN family, all the way from Uganda, on behalf of the whole nation, our deepest condolences. May her soul rest in peace, but may the Spirit of the Lord become greater and powerful as it anoints Matthew and Lori to carry on the full mantle now in the name of Jesus to spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ around the world. When we were standing in um, Lenin Square, um, there was a statue of Lenin behind us. And uh, we were just there making some pictures, and we had just been in this meeting where they had said there will be no restriction on the gospel, and yes, you can bring equipment and set up and establish a television station here in Russia. And just as we left, we went over to make pictures in, in the Linen Square. And we were standing there taking them, and all of a sudden, a beautiful, beautiful lady just came from really nowhere over on the left and she just came right up to me and she looked right into my eyes and she just says thank you thank you she said it twice just like that and she handed me the most beautiful pink rose just a beautiful perfect pink rose and I grabbed the rose and Matthew was there and I said Matt I said, quick, get your camera and make some pictures. And just as, I said, I want a picture of this. And I turned to the right to grab this lady. I wanted her in the picture with me. And just as I did, she was gone. And I don't know, but I have the picture of the rose. I showed it on behind the scenes. And then I crushed it, and I kept the rose, and I have it with me. It was just very beautiful time like if she wasn't an angel she was to me because it was like a confirmation from the Lord and a thank you from him yes. from the Russian people hello everybody evangelist Daniel Kalenda here I'm the president of the ministry of Christ for all nations those of you that know us know that our heartbeat is for evangelism and seeing people come to Christ through the power of the gospel we love the ministry of TBN because through TBN the gospel has been sent to every nation in the world. And Paul and Jan Crouch were at the spearhead of that media mission that has brought so many people into the arms of Jesus. A Jewish family 
from the Beverly Hills area had a little seven-year-old boy. She told the counselor, said, we've given that little boy everything in the world that he could ever want. We live in a mansion in Beverly Hills. We've given him his own little play home out in the back, his own television set, his own horse. He has everything he wants. And yet he didn't really ever do what he's done now. And this is what the story was. She walked by the bedroom one day where he was in there in his bedroom watching Channel 40. He was looking and looking and looking. And she went in not really paying that much attention but thought, well, he looks content, so I'll leave him. She came back a little bit later. That little seven-year-old boy in Beverly Hills in a mansion, a Jewish home, had his little hands raised toward heaven, tears running down his face, and he was praying the sinner's prayer, saying, Jesus, if you're real, come into my heart. Jesus, I want to know you like those people on Channel 40. I want to have that kind of joy. Seven years old, accepting Jesus as his Savior. You know, Jan Crouch just simply embodied what TBN believed, and that was that she wanted to honor Christ and take as many people to heaven with her when she went. That was her goal. Her goal was to reach as many people for Christ as she could. In fact, I love to watch her get excited because she was excited always because more people were finding Jesus. She was the heart behind the network. She helped build this amazing platform to take Jesus 24-7 all around the world. It was her baby. She believed so much in this ministry and in reaching people for Christ. That's what got her excited. That's why she could stand so strong by her husband in the good times and in the bad and just say, I am here. I'm going to be faithful. She's the very definition of faithfulness to ministry. 1996, I'm sitting in Atlanta, Georgia at an affair honoring a great man. And sitting next to me on the dais was this beautiful woman by the name of Jan Crouch. And, and, I, and I always prayed, God, if I ever get a chance to meet her, I'll tell, you, I'll tell her what you told me. And then I sat there next to her and then I became afraid to tell her what he told me. Became afraid to tell her what he told me. And then finally, after I swallowed a lot of water, turned to my right and said, Miss Crouch, and she said, yes. And I said, um, can I tell you what the Lord told me to tell you? She said, yes. I said, it's from Matthew 24, 14. She said, well, tell me what it says. I said, well, the Bible says in Matthew 24, 14, Jesus said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations and then the end shall come. I said, Ms. Crouch, did you ever believe that that scripture, that Jesus was talking about Paul and Jan Crouch, that Jesus was talking about TBN some 2,000 years before? Because this network reaches the whole world. I said, your network goes where our feet can never trod. I, 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 I may never go to a Muslim country, but they can stop me from coming in, but they can't stop the airwaves from coming in. They can't stop the satellite. And she sat there and she began to cry. One day I was in my office. My secretary then was named Carolyn. She came in and her face was just stained with tears. She said, Jan, you're going to read, want to read this one all alone. So she laid a little letter on my desk and walked out. On the outside, it just said on the envelope, written in obviously little girl's handwriting or little child's handwriting, little stick letters, to that lady, Channel 40, Los Angeles. And I got the letter. On the inside, it said, Dear Lady. Would you tell me that you love me again? She says, I'm eight years old and I've never heard.
those words. My daddy's in prison, and my mama lives with a lot of different men. And I never heard anybody tell me they love me. Signed, Julie. I sat down and cried for 30 minutes and got up and got a great big legal size pad of paper. And I wrote, Julie, I love you, 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 I love you. I remember my mom recounting a story to all of us and even the viewers of TBN about a child that had passed away in her arms, died in her arms in Haiti. That moment shaped her, and I believe that first the love for the island nation of Haiti that remained for the rest of her life. Many, many years ago, we went to Haiti for the first time. And my, I left my heart there. I, I never, um, hardly ever sit down to a meal that I don't remember seeing a baby climb over a garbage dump, finding an old orange rind or a banana peel or something just to sustain life. I remember the scenes that we saw in Haiti of the children and I literally left my heart there and we determined many years to do something. I'm certain that one of the most meaningful things that my mom did in her life was giving out dolls and trucks to orphan children around the world. We know that the, the dolls are just changing the children everywhere they go. They're changing our world. You're changing the little children's world. You change the children, you've got a country. See? You get the children, they grow up, and they rule the countries. So you get them, and you've got a country. We're starting right now asking for the dolls to come in. We never ask for money for dolls. This isn't a money project. I want you to go to a store find a little doll that just literally speaks to you and a truck or a toy for a boy and you pick it out you take it home first and I want you to pray over it I want you to love it I want you to name it <laughs> and then you can send it in to us my mom certainly had pink hair we all know that but she started with a pink puppet named Babushka I wonder if Babushka was the seed to what ultimately she became, the pink-haired lady on TV, but love for children and the love for her little character, Babushka, is one of my vivid memories of the early years of TBN. He worked around Mr. Potiphar's house, and one day, the phone rang. The phone? <laughs> and he picked up the phone. Hello, this is John. And on the other end of the line says, put your sweet lips a little closer to the phone. <laughs> Who is this? Who is this? <laughs> Let's pretend. <laughs> We're together. Who is this? That sounds like Mrs. It was. All of a sudden, she peeks around the door and says, Hello, little cute thing. <laughs> Those that got a look behind the scenes of who my mom was realized quickly her great sense of humor and that she loved to laugh. I want to know one thing. Do we have to wear shoes in heaven? Oh, I hope not. Don't you? Don't you hope we get to walk around on those streets and go barefooted? That's what's fun. <laughs> Hello, Evan. 
Those of you that grew up in the South, Columbus, Georgia, Alabama, and around there, you know that chickens were very important, especially if you were preachers. You had chickens, and every Saturday it was the, you know, and you, you know, what to do to them, and you know, <laughs> and Sunday morning came, and it was ready to have Sunday dinner. It was always chicken dinner, the pastor's house, and so we had a lot of chicken. This was my girlfriend's chicken. It was very special. It was very tame. It's very unusual for a chicken to let you put doll clothes on it. But this one did. It was the cutest thing. We could put the little bonnets on it, and she really liked it. We would tie the little bonnets on, put the little dresses on, try to get her wings through it finally. We'd have to just let the old things, you know, hang out. The only thing she really didn't care for was when we put the shoes on her. And she, you know, because their little feet, wow, oh my goodness, I broke the heel on my shoe. <laughs> Should I take it off? No, I won't take it off. I'll just walk like chicken did. That's it. Dwight, I just always feel like the Lord gives me a little something to add to your sermons, you know? I mean, just, I mean, when I tell my chicken story, it's just going to be incredible. But I just had, would somebody grab him with a rope or a cord? But you know what this, we can... This may not be witnessing right now, but we'll <laughs> pray about it. You know what? We can really be in the Lord, and this is what you have just been preaching, and I heard Morris Sorello preach it, and I heard Ken Copeland preach it, and you were preaching it tonight. You were probably listening to them and taking notes last week, but it was great. I praise God that you got it. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Listen, how shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? They can't. How shall they believe in him of whom they've not heard? They can't. How shall they hear without a preacher? They can't. How shall they preach except they be sent? They can't. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. The feet of Paul and Jan Crouch, how beautiful they are. Only heaven knows how many people fell into this category because Paul and Jan obeyed the voice of God, obeyed Him, followed Him, and now, oh, glory to God, their reward is in place. Do you know where we can be when we get on that great big football team. You're going to love this. You're just going to hug my neck when you hear this because I'm, you're just going to love it. We can be, are you bored? <laughs> we can be what Rosie Greer and Merlin Olson and Deacon Jones were. We can be that fearsome foursome that just goes after the devil. She did a great job. Your dad, you have a whole network worldwide to take the message of God 24 hours a day. What a wonderful thing that is. This is Franklin Graham. I'm in Alaska, and I just got word that uh, Jan uh, went home to be with the Lord. Uh, she was a great friend. Uh, she was a friend of not only Samaritan's Purse and the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, but she was the friend of so many ministries uh, around the world. She not only had her ministry, but she used her ministry to help promote 
other ministries. She loved the gospel. She loved the Word of God. And I thank God for her and for her friendship over the years. A great friend of my father these last few years, she would come up to Montreat, North Carolina, uh, just to come see my father, to read scripture to him, pray for him. And it was always such an encouragement. Uh, my father would always look forward to, to her visits. Uh, my father is still with us, and uh, he, he is going to miss Jan. I'm missing Jan already, just thinking about this. I can't think of uh, really uh, the ministry without her. She's just an incredible lady, but we thank God for her and for the family. And so for all the family, uh, and especially the TBN family, I want to say God bless each and every one of you. We want to honor Jan as the co-founder of the Trinity Broadcasting Network. We're so thankful for her role in sharing Christ around the world. You know, countless people, I mean thousands upon thousands and hundreds of thousands of people's lives have been changed through the Word of God that's offered on Trinity Broadcasting Network. So let's always show honor to whom honor is due. And I just want to say that I appreciate the work that Jan and Paul did, and we're going to miss them. Thank you. You cannot think of TBN without thinking of Jan Crouch. From the very beginning, she was there when they had to peel the tile off the floor in the first studio and was there when it didn't look like that very first station was even going to make it. And the hard work that they did, only the family probably would know. The work, the endless hours, all night hours, the telethons, everything it took to get this network to where it is today. Let everything, Let everything that, that has breath praise ye the Lord. How many times have you heard that and been thrilled to tune in to TBN and see Paul and Jan Crouch and the great praise program with all of their guests? In the rallies, oh, those rallies were glorious times. At the Shrine Auditorium, the L.A. Convention Center, the Anaheim Convention And you know, we were friends. We traveled the world together. We went to Israel where we did that satellite that wonderful satellite that you preach from the Mount of Olives the first satellite shoot live it was live from the Mount of Olives back to the great network the network of course at the time was one station channel 40 yes. in Los Angeles but today and all of this came out of the heart and the mind of these two people they were partners they called their ministers partners and they called their wonderful little people partners how many times did we witness my mom thanking the TBN partners. She was so grateful that the vision was caught by someone to help build TBN. I love you, 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 love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. I love you, and I love you, and you, and you, and you, and I love 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 all of you, and you're very special. And I pastor your church. Pastor Church in Freeport, Long Island, in New York, called Perfecting Faith Church, and we are in the hood. And when I say we're in the hood, we're in the hood. We are not in the, you know, you're the suburban hood. We are in the hood of hood. And every year we have this outdoor event of all, all for, for, for three months. We have outdoor service. And while we were having our service, and I'm up preaching to thugs and preaching to gang members and preaching to everybody, the black Mercedes van pulled into the secure area. And I gave the microphone to the singers. They started singing, and I tell the security, get that van out of here. Because the Mercedes in the hood is trouble. You have no clue. And they went to knock on the window, and the window opened, and I saw pink hair. Trademark. And I ran down, and I said, what the name of the Lord is you doing here? Excuse my ebonics, but that's just what I said. Because I was in the hood, you know. I, I, was, I was in that, you know, I was in that flow. I said, what in the name of the Lord is you doing here? She said, I came to see my Donnie. I told them to bring me to my Donnie. And we talked, and I said, well, you got to get out and say something. She got out, and this is the hood. She got pink hair, she got pink top on. No, she didn't have pink top on. She had this long kind of thing. It was long. She had a pantsuit on, but a long kind of 
chiffony flowing kind of thing. And I'm saying, oh, Jesus, she's going to get us killed. And she got up and she just praised the Lord every but I said, oh, this is not good. She's too ladylike for the hood. And that woman went into preaching and telling me that Jesus loves you no matter who you are. He shed his blood for you and she preached that gospel. Y'all don't hear me. She preached so hard and told them that Jesus wants you and he died for you and made an altar call and over 150 people came down to give their life to Jesus. Hello, I'm Dale Way. And first of all, let me say to Matt and Lori, the kids, Paul Jr., the Crouch family, our condolences, our sympathies are with you. We know that your mom is in heaven, Miss Jan. She's reunited with your dad, Paul, and uh, we're happy about that. But we also know that there's a void left here, and so our prayers are with you. I remember on July the 7th, 1992, it was the first time I ever appeared on the Trinity Broadcasting Network. And I appeared for one reason, and one reason only, and that's because Jan Crouch had heard my music and said, get him on TV. And sure enough, that day, July the 7th, 1992, I went to the studio there in Dallas. I was rehearsing my song, and all of a sudden I heard a lady scream, and here comes Jan running down the stairs, the stairs that always went to the side. She came running down yelling, Dale Way, Dale Way. And she said, we've been looking all over for you. And uh, she, I, I said, well, you finally found me, Miss Jan. And so she, sing, she said, you've got to sing that song, Get Saved. You've got to sing that song, Get Saved. When you know that you need a change, Get Saved. I met Jen Crouch in 1978 when I was a guest on the Praise the Lord telecast in Santa Ana, California. Jan and Paul had mortgaged their home to purchase Channel 40 and bless America with Christian television. No one could possibly have imagined that TBN would become the largest Christian network in the world. Jesus is going to be here tonight in a beautiful, special way. He talked to me today about it. I want all of you to close your eyes just a minute. I want you just to close your eyes because Jesus is going to come here. He is coming with an answer to every one of your problems. And I want you just to close your eyes. We're going to close out Kenny. We're going to close out Jerry. We're going to close out all of the people that are here on the stage. We're going to close out Paul and Jan just for a moment. And we're going to see one person. We're going to see Jesus. You can't help but see this, uh, you know, event as a loss, certainly. But it was it was just a it was a precious time uh, that we got to spend with her. We were right, kind of face to face. So I took my phone and I would play songs in her ear. I'd play praise and worship, and I was playing the song so good from the Binions. Um, over and over on their Take Heart album. It just is amazing. I've tasted and seen of the goodness of God. It's so good, so good. Drink from the cup of the water of life. It's so good, so good. Everyone's welcome. We've all been invited to come the table is ready there's room here for everyone and it's so
God chose us to come to the kingdom for such a time as this. The heavens are open, our God will provide. It's so good, so good. The hungry and thirsty will be satisfied. So The table is ready, there's room here for everyone, and it's so good, so good, so good, so good, oh it's so good, so good, so good, so good. We did everything we could do. We did everything we could do to keep this message of Jesus Christ going around the world just for you. Everyone's welcome. We've all been invited to come. has got to hear that Jesus loves them through our lips. What a responsibility. What a joy. Jesus loves you. There, I said it. <laughs> he loves you. And he died for you. So that you don't have to die. Jesus loves you. And so do I. And all the pardon is granted. The prisoner is struggled for several days in the hospital and it was about four o'clock in the morning and it was just me and Matt with her and it was getting tough it was getting tough for her and it was getting mighty tough on me and everyone says you got to let her let her go lead her to the gate let her go and boy it takes a process for us to get there they want to go it takes a process for us to finally hand them off in a way and we had strolled out for about maybe two or three minutes while the nurses were in doing what they did every about four hours and we came back in and it was just ugh. and Matt and I each got on one of her side and I had brought her Bible this is her Bible one of them and I had brought her Bible and I saw that while they had moved her around a little bit they had set her Bible off onto the side so Matt had gotten on one side of her and I was on one and I just started talking to her like I always did and I said oh mama I said I know you'd want your Bible back on your lap and I opened up her Bible and I said it on her lap and I said oh mama I said everybody's waiting for you just go on home to be with Jesus go on to glory and about that time my little comatose mother <laughs> who had had her eyes closed for days popped her little eyes open looked right at me and took her last breath and I know she's home <laughs> And the goodness of God is all over her today. And it's so good, so good, so good, so good. Yes, it's so good, so good, so good, so good, so good. So good. So good. So good. So good. 
One of the things that I remember from the early years of TBN is when TBN would get a praise report, a, a letter, a miracle, something that she would love to run onto stage and simply report the good things, the miracles that were happening in the lives of the viewers of TBN. She ran to the phone booth as Joe was singing. I knew it had happened. I'm going to give names and addresses. Carolyn from Pasadena, California has been legally blind for a year and was in a wheelchair. She can see and she can talk <laughs> right now. And Jesus, Jesus deserves a standing ovation for that. Here is another one. Debbie from Glendale, Arizona was legally blind, gave her heart to Jesus tonight. She has been blind for eight years and can see Paul and Jan and Brother Oscar and the children. <laughs> My mom certainly enjoyed having the, quote, giants of the faith on the Praise the Lord program, but I think what she enjoyed the most was just sitting there at their feet and listening. The blood of Jesus has covered me. But that ain't my condition. Mm -hmm. Therefore, soon as I'm saved, and I know we may differ at that point, but let's go along with me. All right. <laughs> the Holy Spirit began to work under here. Okay. Do you see? Under here. Not visible. Yeah. yeah. On the inside. <laughs> He's working on me. Oh. Can't nobody see it. And every now and then he throws something out. Okay, okay. But but in the meantime, I'm still covered. Oh, and he's Jesus. still working on me. Oh, Jesus. And then about 10 years ago, you know, up until 15 years ago, you know, I, I was quite profane with my mouth. Really? I'd cuss you out in a minute. Little slip of the lip. Yeah, no, the no little slip. <laughs> it was a big one. <laughs> yeah, of course. My members can call in and tell you right at the church, don't get me too mad. <laughs> <laughs> now here, cultural difference. Yeah. I came out of Texas. Yeah, yeah. And I came out where a few words weren't considered profane. <laughs> they were considered <laughs> emphasis. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But guess what? Guess what is happening to me? <laughs> now, and, 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 and when I use the profane word, I'm covered. I ain't lost because I, I, I said no profane word. All right. That's what his blood... What did he complete if he didn't complete my salvation? Money, mm -hmm. religion, sex. You can take all the problems <laughs> that will come to this tonight and they'll move into one of those three areas. Okay, mm. how do you solve the sex problem? The sex problem? <laughs> <laughs> We've only got seven minutes, dear. Yes. He can do it. He can do it. You know, I've always said this uh, to women who come crying. I say, the simple solution to you is to be the other woman. If you're losing your grip on Sam <laughs> and he's two-timing you, go look at your opposition. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then be her. Yeah. See? Meet her. Billy Burke was the wife of Flo Zigfield, mm -hmm. whose yes. business was beautiful women. Mm -hmm. Think what competition she had. <laughs> See? Mm -hmm. How did she handle that competition until Mr. Zigfield's death? She arranged to awaken every morning an hour before her husband. And in that hour, she made herself a radiant beauty so that when Mr. Ziegfeld awakened, he didn't awaken to a head full of barbed wire <laughs> see, <laughs> and grease see, and a nightgown, you know, drifting at the port side <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and pendulums up here that look like grandfather's clock. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to give God a little help. <laughs> yes. Amen. Amen. And if God only has a barbed wire entanglement and, and grease from, from head, chin to end steps, see, <laughs> and you go to bed every night reading the Pentecostal Evangel, <laughs> dear, dear God, <laughs> see, how you is God, problems. how is, yes, you have problems. And now your host, Paul and Jan Crouch. Over the 43 years of TBN's history, many 
funny things have happened on that live Praise the Lord program. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Metal Ark Lemon, come on up here. Let us give you a hug and a love in the name of the Lord. One of God's great young men. For many years, a star of the Harlem Globetrotters, the Buccaneers, and he and Jan are getting it on right now. Go ahead. Let's. Oh, come on. <laughs> don't, don't miss. Don't miss. <laughs> what a joy to be here. Thank you for loving TBN. Thank you for that. Thank you for keeping us on your, in your prayers. And we will you because the body needs each other like we've never needed it before. When you hurt, I hurt. And when I hurt, you hurt. And that's the way it is. And we are becoming one in this body. One of the significant things that I remember about my mom's personality is how she always wanted to fight for the underdog. People in the midst of significant dramas in their life, oftentimes, famous people, unknown people, she always wanted to be there and love them through their pain. In the most broken point of my life as a man, the thing that Jan Couch gave me was hope. When others thought they knew what I needed, all I needed, Pastor Donnie, was for somebody to believe in me. I didn't need an offering. I didn't even need a platform. I just needed somebody to believe in me. And one of the persons that stuck by me more than any person in the world publicly was your mother was your mother, was the mother of the world, Jan Crouch. I don't have words that are adequate to describe the impact that Jan Crouch had on my life. It was in 1988 that she first invited me to come and sing on TBN a song that was called, He'll Do It Again. And that day changed my life. At that point, I was honored to become, at least I considered myself to be, part of the TBN family. And that's how Jan treated us. She treated us like family. In fact, when I had went through some very, very hard days, Jan was there, just giving me encouragement, not with long conversations, but with words that were deep and meaningful, just letting me know that I was loved like she loved so many other people. I've always said that if you know where something is, it's never missing. And we know exactly where our sister Jan Crouch is. She split heaven wide open. The Bible says that I was hungry, and Jan, you fed me. I was thirsty, and Jan, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and Jan, you visited me. I was naked, and Jan, you put clothes on my back. I was sick, and Jan, you took care of me. And, of course, my favorite, where my heart is, is I was in prison, and Jan, you visited me. To me, that is who Jan Crouch was and still is today. And so on behalf of all the Mike Barber Ministries and the prison ministry, from all the inmates, we just want to say to you, Jan, congratulations. You fought the good fight. Uh, you finished your course, and you kept the faith. Hi, I'm Clifton Davis, and I come to you with joy in my heart, but it's tinged with sadness. I've lost a friend. You've lost a friend. The world has lost a friend in the passing of Jan Crouch. A bright light has gone out here at TBN. In fact, a bright light has gone out all over the world because Jan shone like the sun. After 20 years of working with Jan here on the Trinity Broadcasting Network, I can speak from a personal perspective 
and say that what struck me most about Jan Crouch was her spirit of kindness. What a kind woman, compassionate, willing to do anything for folks. Wonderful, loving woman. I met Jan Crouch uh, during the second inauguration for President George W. Bush, and she was so very kind to me. She just immediately invited me to be a guest on Praise the Lord with Clifton Davis, and I just so appreciate her warmth and her love. She really embodied the spirit of the Lord by the way she treated other people, and uh, she had just, a, just a, a great, great ministry. Well, let me just say to the TBN family and to all of the believers around the world who have been blessed by the outreach of TBN, uh, Jan, I know you can hear me, and I know you're up there where our daughter is, Robin, and a lot of other people we love and where Paul is. But I just want to say thanks, uh, many reasons to thank you. Uh, one of the things you and Paul years ago asked me as a, quote, non-Pentecostal, if I would come on TBN and encourage other evangelicals and mainline church leaders to come on because you wanted the whole body of Christ represented and I was able to help and encourage that. I want to thank you for having that on your heart because I know that you wanted the Christian family to get to know one another and to hear people outside their own particular circle. I think, frankly, that is one of the reasons that God blessed TBN. You let the church get to know the other members of the body and to hear the beautifully gifted, diverse parts in leadership. Thank you for that. And we just bless all of you at TBN. I hope you'll continue to pray and pray for Matt and Laurie and all the leaders that God's grace and direction will be on them. And we just thank God for the precious memories. Hi, I'm James McDonald, and every single day my life is blessed and my ministry is extended because of the life and legacy of Jan Crouch. A mother to believers worldwide, a friend to all who knew her, and a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. On behalf of all of the family at First Baptist Church Dallas, we want to extend our deepest sympathies to the Crouch family on the homegoing of one of God's greatest servants, Jan Crouch. You know, when I think about Jan, I think about what it truly means to be a committed disciple of Jesus Christ. A disciple of Jesus is someone who loves the same things that Jesus loved. Jesus loved people, and Jan Crouch loved people. A beautiful lady over there who was very close to suicide, super close to suicide. Had, didn't even have the sound turned up, but the number was on. She called the number at that very moment, the Phoenix number. I happened to be back in the phone booth. The counselor said, Jan, I have a suicide. Will you take the call? I said, of course. I talked to a beautiful lady for an hour and a half. And to make a very long story short, Joe said to me at the end, Jan, if you hadn't have been there, I would be dead by now. But because you were there in Christian television, then I am back into the kingdom, a child of the living God. Oh, Father, we thank you tonight. We praise you tonight because we feel Jesus. In our Everyone knows over the 43-year history as it played out in our homes and living rooms and locations around the world watching TBN. My mom loved to worship God. She loved to pray. She loved to be a part of ministry. Father, just to let us touch these people and love them and tell them we love them and tell you how much we love you for these miracles is all that our life is worth and we thank you for that. Greetings. This is a very deep and emotional time for me to be sharing with you about the passing of Jan Crouch into glory. It's exciting news to know that she is with her Lord Jesus, that she loves so much. We love you and 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 love you. She loved the Lord. My sweet little pink-haired mama, you know what? She loved her grandkids. There was no grandmother anywhere in the world that had a more or a deeper or a richer or more sincere love for her grandkids. What a wonderful 
wonderful night. You, you hate for moments like this ever to end, but I suppose we'll have to move on. We have a little giggling grandbaby. You get in here and see your grandma. <laughs> you get in here and see Jim. Can you say I love you? <laughs> Were you in the wedding? Yeah. Yeah? Did you do a good job? Do you love Jesus? Yeah. Okay, that's it. Cody, listen to Grandma. Where are your teeth? Let me see your teeth, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> One little story about my son Cody. We were um, sitting one night on the platform. Brother Rod Parsley was preaching out in front of us, maybe about 10 feet from us. And so we're kind of in the camera shot and stuff, and all of a sudden, I hear this tussling, and my little two- or three-year-old has lain across the, the chairs, and he's got his little face up in his grandma's lap, and I've got his feet in my lap. Now, all of a sudden, I hear this little, that was him, <laughs> this little, and I'm like, you guys, be quiet. So I'm telling Mom and Cody to be quiet. And I see Cody laying up there, and Cody's going, I'm going to take your wig off. <laughs> She said, what would you just say? He said, I'm going to take your wig off. She said, you take my wig off, I'll jerk your diaper off, and I'll put your bottom up against that camera lens right now. <laughs> camera lens right now. Hi, I'm Heavenly Joy Jerkins, and I'm at the Holy Land Experience at the Smile of a Child Theater. And we're just thanking Mama Jan for everything. And almost as if this was my mom's final act, HLE, the Holy Land Experience, was a place where she wanted people to be able to experience the love of God. You're sitting today in her dream house right here. <laughs> this was mom's um, place where she was um, in her last few years so wrapped up in her creativity and all of her effort went into right here. I'm not used to coming here and not seeing her sitting right here. Seeing her sitting there, always with her hands up, saying, Go, Donnie! Go! Finish singing a song. Sing it again! Sing that song again! If the music was too low, she'd grab a mic, give it to me, and say, go out there and sing. I'm not used to being here without seeing, without seeing Jan standing and praising God. I'm not used to being here without a kiss on the cheek that left a pink lipstick mark. Hello to the Crouch family and the TBEN family. I just wanted to express my uh, condolences to you on the death of Jan, the wonderful, wonderful mother of the Crouch sons, and to everybody at, at the TBN, because they loved her so much. She was a wonderful, wonderful lady. John and I have known the Crouches for years and years and years, and you know what? She's joined her beloved husband now, and they're in a far better place. And if I know Jan, she wouldn't want to live like that. She would want to go on and be with Jesus. And that's exactly what she did. The number of her days God fulfilled. But you know, it was just a couple of months ago when we were in Orlando, Florida, in a night of hope, that I saw Jan. And she looked so good. And she said, Miss Doty, I'm 78 years old. She looked like the picture of health. And so we just loved on each other. It, seem, it seemed like we just kind of had a reunion just between the two of us. And she stayed, and I saw her sitting over there, and I was just so thrilled that she would come to hear Joel preach. Our Jan's gone to be with Jesus. She was my friend and a friend of so many. Jan and I were friends since, almost since TBN started. This had been over 30 years ago. I thank the Lord for the good work that Jan's done. 
and I know that your family, Jan, misses you so much. But you're with Jesus and everything's all right. Mom was many different things to many different people. An encourager, an intercessor, a champion, a visionary, a swift kick when you needed it, a baffling enigma to those who couldn't be bothered to look a little deeper. She would pour the same passion and dedication into a short little play as to the building of this entire network. Details mattered to her because it mattered to God. And at the end of the day, at the end of her life, that's what she stood for. That's what she cared about, what mattered to God. Reach a world, save souls, rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Go from country to country. Establish the kingdom of God. Tell them the kingdom of God is at hand. And when you finish, after you fought a good fight, after you've kept the faith, after you've finished the course, there is a crown of righteousness. There's a reward for you. Lord, we just lift those in the audience who are, are grieving. And you are the God of all comfort. And so just come to them now and give them that comfort. For those who have lost loved ones, Lord, give them a glimpse of the joy they have with you. For to be absent from the body is to be present with you. And in your presence there is exceeding joy. Mighty God. Give them that glimpse, Lord God, in their time of bereavement. Give them that comfort, Lord. The very Christ that had her heart, that had her mind, that had her life, the very Christ she was in love with, stood up off of his throne, Nerandamakul came down into a hospital room, reached out his hand. She opened up her eyes, took her last breath on her, and, and, and took a journey, a journey that every one of us lived to see, a journey that every one of us are waiting on. And she went into the very thing that she's heard since she was a child where streets are gold, where gates are pearl. And no longer does she have to pray behind the veil. No longer does she have to talk to him behind the veil. Now she sees beautiful Jesus face to face. She feels the embrace of Christ. She looks directly into his eyes and says, you are beautiful beyond description. Too marvelous. Today, Jen is looking in the face of the Jesus that she loves so much and called Sweet Jesus. She is looking in his face, the face that she has loved, the God that she served, the God that she gave her life to. And when her eyes opened for the first time into that spirit realm, you know, I wonder what the sights are that she saw. Wow, the beauties of heaven. I wonder what the sounds are when she heard the love, the music of heaven. How about the smells of heaven? We know there's food there. How about just that general feeling of, wow, it's heaven? She and Paul are being welcomed by the thousands who were saved and blessed listening to TBN. She is in heaven, the place where the word farewell is never spoken, the place that has never seen a tear or heard the sobbing of a human voice. 
It is a place of beauty and grandeur, of mansions and angels, and legions of friends who have gone before standing around the throne of God with endless celebration. Jan is there, rejoicing with the harvest of souls who are in heaven's gates because TBN sent the gospel message into their homes around the world. Losing a parent is very, very difficult. We recently lost my sweet little mama. But the Bible says, and we've heard it a thousand times, that when a saint is called home, that heaven rejoices. And we know that's true. That is the hope of salvation. That's the hope of our faith. But you know what? Down here on earth, it still hurts a little bit to lose a parent. Many of you are grieving like I'm grieving over my mama because they considered my mom or my dad their spiritual papa or mama. And, and you may be hurting like we are. And I can only hope and imagine that mom and dad are walking the streets of heaven right now on those beautiful streets of gold wearing wonderful crowns the size of a mansion with tens of thousands of little diamonds in each one representing a soul that came to the Lord through TBN. Doctors Mike and Dee Dee Freeman here, another part of your TBN family who's standing with you at this time believing God for the joy and the peace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. I know firsthand what you must be encountering. My mom herself went to be with the Lord the earlier part of this year. And so I've been able to receive much comfort from reading just Revelations, for instance, chapter number 21, that talks about the beauty and the presence of the kingdom of heaven. And so I want you to take much comfort in that because your mom was a tremendous woman of God who we've had the awesome pleasure of meeting. She is the reason why a part of our ministry goes out all over the world. In our Catholic liturgy, we pray, life has changed, not ended. And for Jan, it has changed now. And I pray for Matt and Lori, all the TBN family, that you grieve Jan well. She did such a beautiful job. Now. Jan and Paul are united once again. They're walking the streets of gold, enjoying the mansions of heaven, and enjoying the embrace of the risen Lord Jesus. It was just a few weeks ago, I was preaching at a conference, and during praise and worship, somebody came up to me and tapped me on the shoulder, and I couldn't make out what they were saying. You know, the music was so loud, and my mind was on my message, but I heard the words, wants to see you. I didn't hear what they said before that. So I leaned in, I said, what? And they said, Dad wants to see you. And I said, who, who wants to see me? And they said, Jan Crouch is here, and she would like to see you. So of course I said, that would be great. And I grabbed Holly by the hand and we walked over. It was my first time meeting Jan. I didn't know that it would be just weeks before she would go to heaven. But I'll never forget the thoughts that I had in that moment. Of course, she hugged me and told me how much she loved me and that she watches me all the time and thinks I'm a great preacher. I don't know if she says that to everyone. I'm sure she probably had said that to everyone. But it meant a lot to me to think that here is a pioneer, someone who stands behind countless, countless, countless sacrifices, a legacy that isn't going to end when her life does 
And here I am talking to this person who has embodied so much joy, so much light, so much hope. And the coolest thing about it was, although it would be my last time and my first time ever seeing her, today I have the opportunity to minister in her legacy. We are so grateful for Jan Crouch. We thank God for the way that she made through faith. We're praying for the Crouch family. We believe that everything that was sown through her life is going to continue to bear fruit for generations to come. We love you, Crouch family. Hey, everyone. I just wanted to tell you how much we love you and how much we're praying for you and how much we honor the memory of Paul and Jan Crouch and how much we're going to miss them and miss Jan here on this earth and yet how excited we are for the legacy that they have left and for the impact all over the world that Paul and Jan created for the kingdom of God. You know, as Christians, we are the only people in the world that can grieve and rejoice at the same time. And I know that we're grieving right now the loss of a wonderful woman of God but we are also rejoicing of how God used her to impact millions of lives around the world. In your heart and in others, uh, she was a, a pioneering lady and loved by so many. Uh, uh, is there anything out of her legacy that you think well, this is something that ought to carry forward? Yes, sir. A lot. You know, you know, you know what I thought of. You, you just led people in a prayer of salvation. Yeah. That's her legacy too. Mm -hmm. The fact that. People are being uh, asked and invited to accept Jesus every day on TBN in multiple languages. That's the legacy of what she wanted. That's what, how she wanted to be known. Jan and Paul Crouch were here. They would say, lead them to Jesus. Lead them to Jesus, Donnie. Lead them to Jesus. Because she was so in love with Jesus. She was so in love with Jesus. There are people that are watching right now and you may not know Jesus and you may be watching it because it's a memorial to two of the greatest pioneers that have ever, ever, ever come about to start network, the largest network in the world. You may be watching out of curiosity and you may have heard something that's put you to your heart. This life may have impacted you. So the last, the last assignment that I have is just as if she was standing right there. My last assignment, and I can hear it in my spirit, lead them to Jesus. I want to introduce you to this great loving Savior who is still so in love with you and you don't even know it. He has never let you go and he's never turned his back on you and he's always been with you even through the roughest of your times. The most the most disobedient of times. No matter where you've been, he's been there with you and he will always stay with you. He wants you to come into the saving knowledge of who he is so he can make your life not just, just good but abundant. He can make your life wonderful. And if there's anybody in this room that may have fallen into sin, you may have fallen into sin. We fall down, but we get up. You may have fallen into sin, but it's not too late because he's right there with you. He said if you make your bed in hell, he'll be right there. He's able to hold you, lift you up, to put your feet upon a rock. He's able to wash you clean. And if there's anybody in this room, anybody watching, that needs the saving love of Jesus Christ, it's available for you right now. All you've got to do is pray the prayer of faith and believe it in your heart. Trust God. Everyone that's watching by television, everyone in this room, just pray with me. And I want everyone, I want everyone in the room to repeat this prayer. To say, Lord Jesus, I need you. And I want you. Come into my life. Thank you for paying the price for me. Thank you for dying for me. So that I don't have to die in my sin. Thank you for rising from the dead. And conquering the power of death. Thank you for love that I can't even fathom. I can't even imagine the way you love me or why you love me. But thank you. 
Today, I give you my life for the rest of my life. Take me, Lord. Change me. Cleanse me. Give me your grace. And by faith, I am born again. I am saved. My sins are forgiven. And I am a new creation. Now, if you believe that, give God a great praise in this room. I said, if you believe that, give God a great praise in this room. I think she knew and believed as much as anyone ever that we all mattered to God, which is why she spent the last 43 years of her life building and protecting TBN so that the whole world would come to know this truth. Mom was once asked, What in your mind is the greatest miracle all that God Mom, has performed for I us? I think the greatest miracle is that he let us be a part of it. That's the first thing I'll ask you, why? Why did you allow me to even be a part of such a miracle? Her response was classic. That's who she was, a dedicated housewife, mother, who the Lord raised up. TBN thrives today and will thrive for generations to come because Jan Crouch spent the last 43 years of her life on her knees in prayer. You can't say this about too many people, but millions and millions of people all over this world have been blessed because of the presence in this world of a woman named Jan Crouch. In fact, God loves this woman so much that he wrote about her in the Bible. Did you know it? Sure. In Proverbs 31, he describes who can find a virtuous wife for her worth is far above rubies. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, yeah, she reaches out her hands to the needy. That was Jan Crouch. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. From all of us here at Shepherd's Grove and Hour of Power, we were so sad to hear about the passing of Jan Crouch. Our prayers are going out to the Crouch family as they're grieving the loss of Mama Jan. You know, I remember meeting Jan for the first time in that little room below the studio. She was holding this big Bible that was looked like it was barely held together. It was uh, just had, you know, ink writing on every page. It looked like every page had been turned and read hundreds of times. And some of you who knew her well, for me, were that little old fat King James version of the Bible. Had no word studies, no commentaries, no cross references. It was just the King James version. And she'd carry it with her, and a subject would come up, and she would just flip to the exact verse that would answer that question, would fit that discussion, would give assurance or challenge. And it was just obvious that Jan was a woman who loved the Bible. She was a delightful person, an encourager. She was so encouraging to everybody, so loving to everybody in that room. And to me, she said, Bobby, you're my favorite minister. And even though I'm pretty sure she probably said that about every minister, it just felt so encouraging to hear that from her, from this legendary woman that even as a little kid, I grew up seeing on TV constantly. Jan Crouch is someone that reached millions of lives for Jesus around the world. God noticed it, I noticed it, and people all around the world are going to be missing her big time. I'm so glad to know that she passed this mantle on to Matt and Lori Crouch, and I know they're going to continue to carry on the, the dream to the next level that God has for Trinity Broadcasting Network. We love you guys. I want to say to Matt and Lori, you don't have big shoes to fill. You have new footprints to make. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for the heart and the life and the legacy of Dr. Paul and Jan Crouch. We know Jan is with Jesus. We know Dr. Paul is with Jesus. Thank you for their life and their legacy. They will never leave the earth. Their lives will never leave the earth. I pray for Matt. I pray for Lori. I pray for the entire Crouch family. God, they need you. 
like never before. We believe today that you're giving them the strength and the wisdom, the anointing to carry this message of winning souls around the world. And before we close this prayer, we celebrate the life once again of this remarkable woman of God, your daughter, Jan Crouch. We lift our hands and give God a praise. And it's done now in Jesus' name. Beautiful. In mom's passing, we have indeed lost one of our great watchmen. Yet I take comfort in knowing that the walls do not stand empty, but today are filled by those whose lives she touched and the legacy she left for us to follow. Jesus loves you, and don't you ever forget it.